Hello everyone. I apologize that it's been a while since I made one of these videos. I know everyone finds them helpful, but one of your classmates has trouble seeing them, and I know that the scale is, is not so great with the program that I used to record, but I did try to blow it up and the program didn't like it. I also tried to record what I was doing on Google Earth and the program didn't like it. So. I'd like to just go ahead and say that I think everybody's doing really well for the class in general, but I don't want you to get hung up on the, the fact that you don't know how to do everything with GIS or, or that you're struggling with using this program. I think many people get the misconception that you're supposed to be able to know how to do everything and get every single product, and that's what constitutes a beginning class in something and that's that's not the case at all with geographic information systems I'm trying to present the class in a different way because my only philosophy that I do want to impose on you is that GIS is an always changing ever evolving tool set and it's not just something static that what I teach you today is going to be the exact same ten years from now I hope it's not it shouldn't be but I get the feeling that some people might go forward and try to use this in your jobs or try to take more advanced classes and hear me breaking your pens in half saying, ah, oh, that career guy was terrible, he didn't, he didn't prepare me for this. But what I want you to take from the class is not what you're prepared for and what you can do, but how you're going to approach those problems. And again, I'll use the example of what I do in the coal mines. The guys that I work for, these super smart engineers and the project people, they have never approached some of their problems from a spatial analysis or geographic information system perspective. They, they've got the, uh, I might have a nail and everything is a hammer, all my tools are a hammer, or even if I had different tools to fix my problems, they, there's a set way to do it. But I'm showing them through the various things that I can do with data manipulation that there are easier ways to get what they're, what they're trying to get or create the maps that they're trying to create. And I've had a lot of different aspects of problems, like people from the land department, people from our marketing and transportation department, the guys that are doing the mapping underground. And they always come to me with something new, and I don't necessarily have any experience or know exactly how I'm going to tackle the problem. But the same, I can do the same thing every single time, and that's what I'm trying to teach you guys. I know how to obtain data or how to create my own. I know that I need to start from scratch even if I have a big pile of data pre-made for me, I have to start with nothing, and I have to sift through that pile and say, okay, I need this and this, but I don't need this. How is this going to look? How is my end user going to view this data? Is this going to be helpful? How can I manipulate this data to get what I want? And that's really what I hope you come away with, is just a really basic understanding of how to use this technology, so that way when you move forward in your work, you can adapt these basic skills that you're getting hopefully in this class to whatever it is you're going to move forward with. Now, I don't want you to I don't want to put you in a box and then send you on your way. It's like, well, you know everything there is to know basically about GIS, go forth into the world. I just want to show you you know what it is, you know it's there. How are you going to use it for what is important to you or what interests you? So, without any further ado, I want you to look over the PDF part for the first bit of how to use and download Google Earth and get your coordinates. But once you actually get your coordinates for a Wendy's location or gas stations, fire stations, then I'm going to show you what to do with them. And what you want to do is you want, the first thing you want to do is convert them into decimal format. And all I did here was type lat long data conversions, about to sneeze, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and the reason we're doing this is because ArcGIS in the background needs these numbers in this format so that way it can correctly project the location that we're going to give it. And you can just think about it, it's the exact same thing as saying, well, 1 over 4 or a fourth is could be represented as 0.25. It's the same thing, we're just converting a fraction to a decimal. Except in this instance, I went to the first website I googled and my latitude, which is the north-south coordinate for a comic book store in Henderson, is 37 degrees, 50 minutes, 29.93 seconds. And the longitude coordinate is negative 87 degrees, 
35 minutes, 27.22 seconds. And make sure that if you're in the Western Hemisphere, which anything in the northern United States is going to be, or excuse me, North America, that number for your longitude is going to be negative. So when you convert to decimal, you get these two values, and that's what you need. So without even opening ArcMap or anything GIS related, you got your coordinates from Google Earth, and you're going to open up a Microsoft workbook, and I've already got one made up, and all I did was put that the comic store is located at a lat of 37.84165 and a long of negative 87.5909. You can see that's all I've got in my Excel table. And down here I have named my sheet something different and I'll show you why that's important but it's just something familiar so it differentiates itself from the other two default sheets. So I'm going to close that out, shut down that, and then I'm going to open up ArcMap. Okay, so all you've done is gotten coordinates from Google Earth and you converted them because it needs to be in a decimal format for ArcGIS to read. And now I'm going to add that Excel table. And it's right there and in this directory. And remember, I know someone was having some trouble. If you open this up and you can't find where your folder is, like where you put all your information, use this feature here, the connect to folder, and then you can browse your computer like you could any other program. It'll let you find it. You can connect to that folder and find where you put this Excel sheet. So I'm going to add it and see how it's got the lat long. I know that's where the data I want is stored because that's what I, I renamed it. So you're just going to add that. And then here I've got the table. I'm going to open it just to make sure. And remember that that's it. It's super simple. I did that myself and you guys are going to do that if you use it for your final project. That's all that the table is. Next you want to go to File, come down to Add Data, and instead of the typical Add Data feature, you want to use this Add XY Data. And when you pop this window up, it's going to automatically populate this stuff for you because you've got the table here. But it, if you didn't, the X field is always going to be your longitude value and the Y field is always going to be your lat. The Z field is for elevation. If you get to more advanced programs or you want to add elevation, if that's something you want to try to use for your final project, feel free to do so, but that's what that means. Double check and make sure you're pulling from the, light, uh, the right sheet and the right table, and we are. And your coordinate system is under Geographic Coordinate Systems. Scroll down to World, and it is the WGS 1984. And it's this because that is what Google Earth uses as their, their grid, as their XY coordinate plane for projecting everything on Google Earth. And we want to tell it that that's where we're getting our coordinate system from. That's where these numbers came from. And this warning is going to tell you you don't have a key field in your table, and it's going to create one, or it might create problems. Don't worry about that. Okay, now you've got your dot. I would go up here to this temporary shapefile, come down and to data, and export your data. And I'm going to put it somewhere. I've done this twice. Hopefully this time it'll actually record. Lat long test two. And all you're doing is creating a new shape file. I've named it something I'm going to remember in a location I can find easily. I'm going to add that to my to my map. I'm going to come over here in the table of contents and change it to list by my drawing order and get rid of the temporary file that was created from the XY data sheet. Now this is in WGS 1984 and we want to project it into what I'm going to be working with for my project and examples which will be Kentucky NAD 83 South so I'm going to select to reproject this not define the projection I'm going to beat that into you guys' head because it'll make life a lot easier later on trust me lat long test 2 NAD 83 something I can remember and distinguish from other shape files going to go down to state plane NAD 83 in United States feet find my projection which is Kentucky South US feet tell it OK it's completed the projection now if you look under the properties of your layers you're going to notice that the data layer window is in the WGS 1994 I'm going to close out of ArcMap not save and reopen it Every time you have an untitled map 
if you bring in something, it's going to, whatever the projection is for that first piece of data, it's going to turn the entire map into that. And there are some projections that don't project well on the fly and don't work well with each other. So just to make sure that I'm getting the right data and the right information and the right projections, I'm going to go back to my second test here, add that data, and now I'm going to add a base map under my add data imagery and once it gets to it this is how I'm gonna to check to see whether or not I projected my new feature you're like uh oh that doesn't look right make sure to check up here for your map scale that's very 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 close I'm gonna zoom out to something a little more reasonable 1 to 24,000 and then once it gets loading hopefully I'll be able to see that I did everything correct and that there's a dot where the comic book store is, downtown Henderson, Kentucky. Have to forgive the internet. It takes a while for these big aerials to load. But I, I know I did this kind of quick, but I wanted to show an example and I try to load these up in high definition. Oops, so there you go. You'll see my green dot. It was right there when I zoomed back in. That was Henderson. And when it comes into focus, hopefully you will be able to see comic book store is indeed in this complex right there on the corner of Main Street so I got it now I have that and if I want to I can come in and I can add uh, I can add a field just like I showed you in the not double text just like I showed you in the PDF and I can go into more examples in the next video but I can give it just an arbitrary rating and then if you were to go into an edit session, I could put awesome or fantastic, or I could have changed that to a double or a short integer and, and put any value of a number in there. But that is how you take lat long coordinates and make your own feature. You have that GIS feature now, that shape file that you can share with anybody else, and you have a point of reference that if I knew my Wendy's was here, and there was a bank there, and the tennis courts are here, here's where they play music sometimes, I could add more points based on this then I know I've got the right coordinates and then I can continue to grow my layer and make something pretty much out of nothing so I hope that was fairly straightforward and that now along with the PDF in this video that you guys can get it I'll make some more videos on some of the other questions that you've been asking me as soon as possible but if you have any more questions please as always do not hesitate to ask I'm here to help and glad to do so